Hey techies, it's Dan. It's really hot today. It's really hot in our studio. The air conditioning has been wonky, which seems to follow us for with every building we're in. <laughs> yeah. So I'm not going to pick on Jacob too much because I've been yelling at him all I'm day. I'm already in the hot seat. Yeah, he's already in the hot seat. So I would just say that here's my assistant host, wow. my, my coffee getter. No respect. Know. Tell you, um, I get no respect. The fact that you even know that reference scares me because that's way before your time. <laughs> so, our last episode, we talked about my time working at Radio Shack way back when, you know, in dinosaur age. Um, I thought it'd be kind of cool to pull out our huge collection of Radio Shack catalogs, pick a year, and then just go through them and have both of us. Pick some items that we found that were interesting to us and talk about them. Yeah, so we've got dozens of them that we've accumulated, you know, for they're great for research on particular Tandy computers and whatnot, but they're also just fun to look through. Uh, we've got at least 20 years of them, you'd say, right? Something like that. I mean, we're missing a few years here and there, but we have a pretty good collection. So the year that we picked, and we did this at random, was 1990 that we're going to start at, which... How old were you in 1990? I was negative six. So that brings an interesting thing because a lot of these items that are in that particular catalog are before your time. However, an interesting thing with that is uh, that was when around the time period where you were doing a lot of your electronics purchasing, mm -hmm. right? So you had a lot of those devices from your, you know, your late teens to your 20s still by the mm -hmm. time I was a kid. Right. You know, you, you know, they'd been getting old, but some of them you had 20, 30 years, you know. And I made an effort to not just pick items that I owned, even though there are a few that I did pick that I did own because I just found them to be very interesting. But I made it a point to pick some items that either I didn't own or that I had very little experience with. So, you know, I think that will be interesting. And for you, almost everything that you got to look at, you probably have never used. I don't, I, you know, I haven't seen all your list yet. But you know a couple of them. Well, I know a few because you, I saw you I going, wow. And was like, <laughs> oh my gosh, I gotta have that on my list. Because yeah. I've got very interesting picks. Right, but you, you know, I don't know all of them. And, you know, you could have changed even some of the ones we talked about. Yep. But what I found interesting is most of those things, I could hear you, you know, when you were doing your research going, what is that? Or why would there anyone was one want item, that? And it is on my list that legitimately stumped me for a little while. See, and um, I, I think that's interesting. Uh, so I want to say we, we picked 1990 just because there wasn't real great reasoning no, by it. it's pretty it, random. We've got tons of other years. So if there's a particular year of tech you're really into, let us know and maybe we'll, we'll do an episode on that year. No, no, we, we definitely will do different years. So if you have one that you'd like to see us jump to, let us know. Your favorite year? Um, well, I know which one you'd like to do next. Hmm. We'll see. <laughs> All right. So my first item is SKU 31-2020, for those of you who like to know your SKUs. It is a 10-band graphic equalizer with a spectrum display. Now, do you even know what a graphic equalizer is. Yeah, so you got your different... And I'm going to explain terribly. <laughs> uh, I, it's really funny because, you know, I watch tons of, like, audio-related mm -hmm. YouTube videos. I watch tons of Tech Moan, for example. Right. right? Um, but the only <laughs> ones I've ever used have been completely digital interfaces. Right, right. You know, uh, even my phone has one now. Your phone has a graphic equalizer. Yeah, it has one built into it. Um, it's a simple one, don't right. get me wrong. But See, it, my experience is most of the devices nowadays have presets. It's like, you know, my stereo receiver has presets for movie and mm -hmm. for sports and all that stuff. And there's no real fine grain. You know, some will have a bass and treble control, but nothing like the old ones where you had 20, you know, uh, 10 dials on either side, left and right. And right. I'm used to like it. six to eight band equalizers that you can mess with, you know, just a couple simple ones. We've got a, a 
TV off to the side, you get is can't see that's got the images with it, mm-hmm. and that's a lot more than I'm used to seeing. Yeah. And, and the beauty of it was you had the spectrum display that just looks so cool. Like if you go back and look at some of the '80s movies, there's always got to be this shot of the stereo and yeah. the spectrum EQ going. You know, I I like them. I thought they were cool. So why this one in particular? Um, because it had the Spectrum display, whereas the other model didn't, and I own this particular one. However, you know, I had the silver version, and... Uh, All right, silver versus black, hi-fi. We gotta have this fight now. Black. Silver. Black. Silver. Black looks so much I better. I didn't even know our opinions were so different <laughs> on this. That's... That's really funny. Uh, uh, I am a silver hi-fi man myself. Mm-hmm. Uh, guys. <laughs> so, you know, and, and right around the 90s, it was kind of a transitional period where everything was kind of going from a silver look to a black look. Yeah. Um, if you look back at some of the uh, late 80s catalogs, you'll see a lot of silver. Um, and then a lot of their smaller micro um, audio things, I don't know what they called them, but they were little like mm-hmm. shelf size stereo components. Those stayed silver forever. I feel like silver's kind of made a comeback in recent years. I feel like I see a lot of more silver components, especially when they're trying to be like the minimalist style. Because a black box that has nothing on it looks bad. A silver box that has nothing on it looks better. Uh, Anyways, how much was wrong. this thing? It was about 140 bucks, and, uh, you know, again, I had some. I don't think I ever paid that. I think it was always, like, on sale for, like, 99 95 uh, I did look. Was there an employee discount? There was an employee discount. That's not a good question, but at the time that I bought this, I was not an employee. You're but just a fan. If I remember correctly, I think the employee discount was uh, 10% off of retail. Mm-hmm. That's pretty respectable. When I worked at another retailer, which we'll talk about in a later episode, they had a discount program of cost. So whatever their adjusted cost was of an item, that's what you paid. I see. That was nice. So I did look on eBay because I was curious. And, you know, we'll talk about a lot of these items on eBay. Yeah, what they're currently going what for. They're, or if you can even get them. Right. And I did find some right around the $50 range um, in the silver version but what about the black no black i didn't see any of the black and matter of fact i think there was only one listing Mm. so it's not like these are very common out there and you know obviously you'd have to find a receiver that has the ability to handle that which Mm. like a lot of modern ones are all hmi based so it wouldn't work anyway so you'd have to have you know like kind of a same time period um receiver so would you say that it's Just because it's got some cool, flashy visuals for it that you chose this model. It's just, well, other than that, it's just, you know, another one. Correct. I mean, the Spectrum Analyzer display was the cool part. But I did use an EQ to actually control how audio sound. And, uh, you know, all my stereos in the 80s and 90s had them. And then they became not a thing anymore. Mm -hmm. All right, what's next? So my next pick... Is skew 14935, and this is an A track audio cassette player. I even know they were still making eight track in the 90s. That seems no one really was making to no, me. the cassettes were not being made back no, then. No, no, no. This was for old people who needed. An A track to add to their stereo because they had all those old Bee Gees on. A track that they didn't want to get rid of. Right. For a modern example, uh, you know, it's like how you can still go to Walmart and get a VHS player. This was worse because A track wasn't even around that long. It wasn't that popular. You know, it, it had a shorter lifespan. You, you think like VHS, VHS was around for a long time. DVD was around for a long time. A track was not. I like how they acknowledge it because the, the first sentence of the description there is don't let your cartridges gather dust. <laughs> Right. And, and um, again, and we'll we'll put up visuals of all these things so you guys can see them with us. But it's small. Like, I mean, it, it looks like something that doesn't fit. I mean, I know the size of an eight track. I've seen hundreds of them at thrift stores. You that's know? that's they are the only literally place you worthless. see that. Because um, and in the 90s and the 80s, that's where you saw them. That thing's maybe the size of two eight tracks. You right. Know? 
So if you had a, a stereo system, this thing would sit like a sore thumb and be like blaring, I'm old, I'm old, I'm old. Oh. It, it's just silly. 60 and, bucks for it, though. I mean, if you needed an 8-track player for whatever reason. No one should have ever needed an 8-track player. Um, I mean, yeah, and they I, were awful. You, you bring up a valid point, though. Uh, and When I think 8-track, I don't even think about a home hi-fi. I think it's in the car. Right. We had a 8-track player in our 1972 car, Plymouth Valiant, with AM radio. That was my last experience with an A track ever, <laughs> and, and I'm okay with that. You know, it, it was a just annoying cartridgey weird thing. So, how much is one of these crown jewels of your A track collections now? You can still get them on eBay for around fifty bucks, and there so, was quite a few of them. I was actually surprised. around the same price they were new. Right, right. A little cheaper, well, especially I mean, when you factor in inflation. But correct, but. Yeah, 50 bucks, you know, and there are a few non-working ones and a few whatever. But, yeah, if you have your 80s or 70s A-track of the Bee Gees and you really want to hear it that way instead of on streaming or CD or cassette, there's an option for you. Mm -hmm. And here it is. All right, what's next? All right. My next one, I forgot they existed. I don't know why they existed. <laughs> the image just came up on the screen, and I'm trying they're, to process they're this. They're awful. They're, they're terrible. And the guy in the catalog looks miserable he as looks he should. He looks incredibly uncomfortable. So he this looks is, like it's like you just put like a br like an alien face hugger on his head, and he's like, "Oh, I don't know if it's gonna eat me or not." <laughs> okay, this is skew twelve one twenty eight, and it is the um, Sportsmate. Headband radio. $25 for this. So it's literally just a band. It is speakers. a headband with a little transistor radio that clips onto it. So you could listen to music as you're jogging. Wait, it, is it just... It doesn't go in your ears. It's no, like no, I don't speaker. think so. I it, It's little speakers right on the, the little yellow thing that goes on your head. All the annoyance of someone in, on public transportation is using there their earbuds? phone... Oh, it's, our producer says there is earbuds. I'd, either way, it's awful. It's so gross looking. It is an incredible fashion statement. Not a good one, but incredible. No, I mean, this is probably one of the worst things I could ever think of. And as, uh, you know, as we mentioned, the poor guy who got his photo taken for the catalog for the rest of his life, people are going to see that and go, you look wow. like a... Dork. No one looks at these catalogs anymore except for really nerdy people like, uh, oh. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, oh. um, Self-diss. <laughs> and our audience. Thanks, guys. Uh, uh, if I want one of these so I can wear it around when I go to Starbucks tomorrow so I can be ultimate level hipster, how much? Because I need one of these. So I looked on eBay. I tried several different search terms because I wanted to make sure I got it right. I couldn't find any. <laughs> the rarest item from the catalog. All right. I, I couldn't find any. And honestly, anyone who wants one of these, I really am concerned about your choices in style. First thing, you need one that's new, right? You don't want yeah, someone else's like 20-year-old right, so sweat. A headband, first of all. A headband and you running around sweating into this. Oh, it's so gross. I, <laughs> I did see they had some of the yellow ones where they were like the headphones with the band, uh, a few of those. But I thought this is whoever the buyer was at Radio Shack said, this is the product. This is the product that's going to sell. I, and man, I, I hope that person watches this video and could tell us their reasoning because this thing's ugly it, and it, scary. I'm so confused by just the logistics of them. I want a pair just to figure it out. You know? No one wants this. This should not I exist. Do, which, I don't know, I think that says more about me than it says about the product, but... I'm looking at the picture off to the side here, and I'm imagining Jacob's face, and if I had any <laughs> Photoshop skills, that's what I would do, because, oh my goodness, it's bad. I it's want bad. It. Uh, all right, uh, that was a lot of fun on that one, but what is next on the list? So the next one... Skew 12996, I believe it is. And they actually had 
three different models in his catalog, but I went with the first one. It's the Lovable Pet Radio Bear. The bear? The bear. I went with the bear because... Is it a bear or a dog? I think it's a dog. It's hard to tell. Yeah. It might be a it dog. It does look like a dog, but it, I could also see bear. It, yeah. It's listed as a dog. But... Okay, so it's got to be a dog. I, I I didn't look that closely. I just... I would be terrified if I were a kid giving this thing. I like the raccoon. <laughs> <laughs> if you gave this to a little child, <laughs> wouldn't you be a little bit unnerved? Look They're at the They're scary rat. looking. They're supposed to be lovable. I, I don't want to say what I'm thinking about them because we'll get demonetized. Yeah, please don't. Um, <laughs> we, we need every penny we can get. But they're, they're scary looking. These are not cute. They are scary. And I get the idea. Like, you don't want to give a kid an actual radio because they'll bust it in 17 minutes, right? Right. So wrap it in some plush, you know, stuff. But, like, what's the point? Right. I don't think – if you've got a child young enough that they can't handle a radio, they don't care about listening to the radio. Now, the question – and I I didn't look this up, but was that AM only or is that AM FM? Uh, does it say? I don't know. Uh, AM FM, okay. It does look to be both, yeah. Yeah. So at least oh, the raccoon's that. not the raccoon's the bad one of the bunch. <laughs> so yeah, these uh, these just stood out to me as being really unnerving, and I I would never give a child fifteen one of these. to twenty bucks for them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't <laughs> I don't like. Um, that's really all I got to say on that one. So uh, I looked on eBay to see if I can find one. Yeah? I could not. Not even the raccoon? Not even the raccoon. I could not find any of the three radios. You know, uh, again, maybe the audience might have better luck searching, but I could not find one. And I think that's a good thing. You also have to put batteries in them, and there's no way a child could do that without some sort of, like, I have to rip open my stuffed animal and shove power (laughs) inside it. This is just a gift that no one should have given. And again, it's kind of like the uh, head uh, headband radio. I just think it it's a yeah. bad idea. All right. Uh, that was a good one. Uh, I'm curious to see what else you have on your list. Is it all going to be like items a serial killer would own? This item I could see a serial killer having because they want to live off the grid and all that kind of $2, stuff. $2,000. Can you, can you wait? No. Can you wait? So the next time I picked, and it's a bundle, so there's actually a few SKUs, but it's a C and KU band satellite receiver dish package. And yes, it was $2,000. $2,000. $2,000 for the receiver and the satellite dish. And it was nine foot in diameter. This thing was huge. Now, I do know someone who had one, so I, I've actually seen this thing in person installed. Nine foot in diameter round dish that you had to put a concrete slab to hold so that you could have satellite television. This would have been like really top of the line, wouldn't it? Like, so here's the thing. I mean, in the 90s, cable was out. Cable was an option. For some people. This was this was more of a I live out in a country and I have no choice kind of thing. And this is right. kind of before the uh, the dish network style dish came out. Mm-hmm. So this was really your only choice. And, you know, I, I'm not an expert on the CNKU band. Uh, I've forgotten almost everything I knew about them. But I do remember that you had to pay for a lot of these things to get unscrambled. Oh. And so you would get the signal. But a lot of them would be scrambled and you have to pay a fee to to right. unlock them in some way. And, and I'm sure our audience knows more about these. I just remember that it was expensive. And when my friend had his put in, it was a difficult process. And if there were weather, forget about it. I only had satellite for a couple months. Month, but you had the once, small dish. And that was small dish. Right. And even that sucked. Right. You know, every, every whenever there was a storm, it would just go out completely. <laughs> And again, two thousand dollars in nineteen ninety. Consider this: yeah. if you were in that time period and you had two grand burning in your pocket, mm-hmm. 
A, you can buy yourself a satellite receiver, or right. B, put $2,000 into, at their worst period ever, Apple stock. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> one of them would actually bring you value, and the other one will be scrap metal. Well, think about this. You buy it. Mm-hmm. You use it for a while. You can't get rid of it. Who's going to buy your used satellite? Right. No one's it? going to want your used satellite. But again, you know, no one uses, I don't believe, and again, I could be wrong, but I don't believe anyone uses the C and KU band satellites anymore. So, you you know, it's obsolete completely at this point. But, yeah, I just, thumb me through the catalog. I remember we sold maybe two of these in my whole time working at Radio Shack. And one of them was an employee who bought it, you know, after it had long since been sitting there. Um, now, I assume you couldn't find any of these on eBay. Oh, no. Because I'm assuming, imagine the shipping cost. Yeah. Yeah, and I don't remember how it came. I, I'm guessing that the, the dish itself didn't come fully assembled and you had to put it together. But right. I don't, I honestly don't remember. It's been so long ago. Uh, maybe one of our audience will, you know, have a little bit more insight on that. But I would think... That it have to come, you know, unassembled, and you'd have to put it together because this thing was huge. Again, nine foot in diameter. I remember standing next to it, going, "Uh, yeah, it's huge." Yeah. So that was my uh, my thought on that one. I, I'm so glad we don't have to do those things because that's just dumb looking. But I need a satellite receiver to catch that broadcast of MC Hammer on television. Oh my goodness. Okay, so my next one is kind of a weird one. Uh, Skew 49307, it's a photo relay alarm system. And the reason I picked this is we had this in our store. We had it in all the stores I worked at, and I hated it. What do you mean you had it in your store? Like installed in, in the in store? The, yeah, in all the radio shacks I worked at, we had this device installed at the front door. So you had a box on one side, and then you had a little... Um, right, it's like a tripwire right. kind of deal. Right, but it was infrared, so you, you didn't actually see it. But if you cross that beam, it would, you know, make a little chime of some type to let you know people were walking in and out. Mm-hmm. I heard that sound over. Oh, it's like when over. you go to a gas station that has a like a noise when you open the door. Yes, kind of like so that. So the minute you cross that beam, it would go off. Um, I hated that sound so much. I mean, I get the point, especially if you only have one or two people working in a radio shack and you're in the back, you know, looking for a box or doing your report. Someone can walk into the front of the store, grab something and go. Right. So you would have no idea. So, I mean, it, it had a purpose, but I just remember how much I hated the sound of it. And I just got so tired of the sound of it. Uh, incidentally, um, we had a friend who owned a restaurant in this uh, area and they had a, a much newer model Similar idea, though. And it had a chime. And the chime was much more pleasant than the one I remember from Radio Shack. Mm-hmm. But the chime actually sounded identical to the sound that the uh, trains in Chicago make when their doors are closing. They have, like, a chime. Right. Uh, boo, boo. Right. And it made, like, the exact same tone. And I just, every time I was sitting there, I'm like, I could hear the announcement on the, the train. Yes. Um, but, yeah, these were, you know, these were common. A lot of Radio Shacks had them in, you know, in the stores just so that you knew people were coming in and out. And I just thought it was kind of an interesting... Definitely seems like a useful thing, outside of annoying your employees. It was useful. I just hated the sound. 70 bucks isn't bad either. These things are still on eBay. This exact model. Yeah? Yeah, there was one going... Uh, it was a, an auction, so it still had like five days to go. But it was at $5. So if you really wanted... That annoying sound. <laughs> we, I would totally set that up in your apartment <laughs> to play. It, it would quickly be removed. But yeah, you can get them for five bucks. Well, you know, right now, I don't know where it's going to go with that auction. I, I didn't see many of them. It was just, you know, maybe one or two. Yeah, nice. Um, okay. Uh, we're coming towards the end of yours. You got a couple more. What's next? I told you I kind of stayed away from some of the uh, items that I owned, but this one I owned. Um, SKU 6670, I believe it was. Um, This is a plug and power clock controller. This thing was amazing. Now let's start with talk about plug and power. 
Radio Shack had this collection of devices that would allow you to control electrical items using a control box so that you can like remotely control things in your house. Now, what do you mean by control? Just turn off and turn on? Turn on and off. Yeah. Yep. Okay. So they had like a box that had four different switches and you can turn on and off your lights. And it was really cool then because you'd be like, oh, you know, that light over there, I'm going to turn it off. And it would go through the power lines in your house to control the thing. So you'd have a receiver on one end. Mm-hmm. Um, they made this clock device that was, you know, kind of designed just to, you know, do like timing of your lights and whatever. I found a good use for it. What was that use? I made it my alarm clock. I connected it to my stereo. <laughs> so set the clock. And in the morning, I would be awoken to FM radio at a loud volume to make sure I got up. Ah, this thing was it. incredibly cool. I loved it. It was one of my favorite devices that I ever owned from Radio Shack. And that's it's, saying a lot because I've owned a lot of things. It's but, interesting because it's such a like simple actual function but mm-hmm. there are so many things you can do with that you know i'd set it up so it would uh turn on my coffee pot and make me coffee in the morning <laughs> right and, and you know you could absolutely do that with that um before the you know mr coffee came out that would be a great way to do it um this thing was cool and, and i liked it and i used it for years as an alarm clock i had it turning on my realistic stereo system you know you were really brand loyal huh um yeah, I was. <laughs> How much would one of these be now if I did want to hook my entire house up to one of these things? I did find some on eBay, and I'm actually really kind of wanting it. Um, but it was a, an auction currently under 30 bucks. Um, I'm hoping that I get it. Oh, okay. Because I want one of these again. I, I don't know, though. I cannot remember if you had to have the receiver or if you can actually plug something directly into the clock unit as well. I cannot remember. It's been so long. But I'm hoping that, you know, if I do need the receiver, I can find the receiver because I would love to have one of these again. If we get one, we'll do a video about it here. So this next one is your last item. Mm-hmm. So my last one is SKU 262804. It is the Tandy LP1000 laser printer. Wow. Um, I've never seen one of these. I I know that they had them. I think they were in the catalog. I remember seeing them. And I think maybe the computer centers had them. I don't remember ever having one in our store. The thing looks like a copier. And I I don't know if it could do copying or not. I don't know. I didn't even look that far. It just... It looks cool. That It looks like expensive. a monster. And I bet you when this thing's printing, your lights are dimming. <laughs> you know? Um, I don't know who actually OEM this because I don't think Tanny made it, you know... Our producer says it only printed, so it's even more... I believe you know, this is the most expensive item possibly in the entire catalog. It was just under $2,600 for this thing. I, I don't remember ever seeing one in my time working at Radio Shack. And again, maybe our audience had, maybe they sold some. I know we got some guys who watched this who uh, worked in the computer centers. Maybe That's they could tell us. That's quite if, early for a really nice laser printer, though. Right. Well, so I, you'd be pretty ahead of the game. Right. You know, because in the stores, we had... Um, you know, we had dot matrix printers for doing our reports and for um, printing receipts. Mm-hmm. We didn't have laser printers. And, you know, my first laser printer was a non Radio Shack printer. It was, a, I want to say an Oka Data, but maybe it was Brother. It's one of the two. Um, I got it because it was like an employee purchase kind of deal. Mm-hmm. 99 bucks. So I thought, this is great. I'm going to get a laser printer for 99 bucks. Yeah. I was living in an apartment in Chicago, older building. Every time I go to print, the lights would dim. <laughs> and the replacement toner was like 80 bucks. Nice. It was like $99 printer. 80 bucks every time the toner ran so can out. We, can we get one of these now? Um, ironically, no. I could not find any. But I did find the toner cartridge on eBay for 25 bucks. But All right. So we get the toner first, and then just hope. I wouldn't want one of these. It would scare me. I mean, honestly, printers. Yeah, also, we already have a bunch of printers, and, like, where would we put it? This thing's probably huge. Yeah, I mean, compared to some of the dot matrix printers that we have from Tandy, this thing probably would be, like, 
what do you think, four times the size? Yeah, it's. I mean, it's huge. So I wouldn't even want to store one because you're not going to want to print with this thing. But I, I just found it interesting because it looks like a copier. It doesn't apparently do copying, but it looks like one. And I don't remember ever seeing one in person. And if you have $2,600 in 1990 for a printer, you are a lucky person. Yeah, no kidding. So that was my list. And, you know, I did try and throw in a few odd ones. And, you know, the, uh, again, I tried to stay away from items I own. You didn't own anything no. in this catalog. No. Not so a, I'm, not I'm really interested to see what things caught your attention. So what's your first? Okay, so I've got a ton of fun things on here, but, you know, most of them are also some sort of serious, you know, at least useful in some way piece of technology. But this... It just came on the, screen and I don't see any useful thing. The Alumastorm High Energy Light Display for $120, skew 42 30 35 I love these things. No legitimate use for it. No, it's just a party trick, but it was so cool. And and here's the thing. You get to be uh you get to be oh I'm so mad at myself. <laughs> you lost Palpatine. the reference. Oh. <laughs> um they were what, 120 bucks you said? Yeah, $120 in 1990. Yeah. And I still sold quite a few of them. Typically, oh, they'd be on cool. sale for ninety nine ninety five, and that would be when we sell them. Sometimes they'd actually drop down to like seventy nine ninety five, but I sold quite a few of them. I actually owned one of these, and after a while, it became oh, there's that thing that's on the shelf that I wasted money on because it it really is a, a one trick, you know. Ooh, it's cool. Right. And it just becomes kind of you know. I mean, it's like a lava lamp, but. It's only useful when you're touching it. Right, right. And that's the thing. A lava lamp, you know, aesthetically, you can be sitting there and you'd be like, oh, that's pretty. This thing's just kind of, I mean, it, it, it's still. It's fun. I've used right. them before. It is right. fun to mess with. Is $120 fun? Probably not. Um, again, I sold quite a few of them, so they must have been. So can you still get them? I think yes. And I've, I've seen some on eBay. But the prices are crazy fluctuating. Okay. You've got some listed as little as like 20 bucks. I'd pay but, 20 for them. Yeah, I would too, but that also kind of scares me. Right. Like, See, my what's concern wrong though is it? shipping them. I mean, we've seen how many computers that we have bought from eBay that have been destroyed. And this thing was a glass dome. I'd be really concerned. Unless they have the original box, maybe. And I it's funny, the damaged. real nice ones, you know how much they cost? How much? $120. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. Um, I saw no real purpose, and you know, Radio Shack sold a lot of these kind of things, like the uh, stop, the stop and go light, if you know, um, the revolving light, the strobe light, and all those kind of things. And I'm sure we'll cover some of those later. But I remember coming into work in the morning and having to go turn these all on, so that you know had you know those attention getters, and that's really what they did for us is they got people's attention to start looking around. Right. So what's your next one? So this one, this one's fun. This is a uh, twelve uh, skew wise twelve dash nine ten, and this is the one that confused me. <laughs> Again, all right, image just came on screen and okay. it makes me laugh. Before we get into how it confused me, I just want to say that this is possibly the ugliest tech item I've ever seen. <laughs> um, it's got a handle on the side on an oblong object. Yeah, because you're and supposed that to just is carry the, it like this and jam out. That is the grossest cassette door I've ever seen. <laughs> uh, so w my confusion with this when I first saw it, not re reading into it, just looked at the picture, is what is it? I was like, yo, is it a really awkwardly sized Walkman that happens to have a speaker? Is it a, a boombox? It's kind of both. Yeah. Um, it's like a mini boombox. I don't remember ever selling any of these. I... I I vaguely remember them being on a shelf. I don't remember ever selling them. Um, wow. Um, I'm, I'm reading the text there. Yeah. Five C cell batteries. That's five's a weird number. Normally it's four or six. That's weird. Yeah. Um, it, it it doesn't seem like it would be that comfortable to carry around with that handle because it's got to have some weight with that many batteries. Yeah. Why is the handle on the side? I'm legitimately they, angry looking at this. <laughs> they were looking for something aesthetically different. And I mean, if you go back and look at all the 80s boomboxes with the handle on the top, 
How did you distinguish something unique? And it's $70. Yeah. For the ugliest little boombox. You know ever. you want you know you want one. No, I well. <laughs> I mean, I can pick one up right now for 15 bucks on eBay. $15. I might buy one just to just, sledgehammer. Just it. so you can No, you can't do that. That's wrong. <laughs> Guys, should I sledgehammer one of these? I hate it. I really do. I understand that. It's but like we we cannot sledgehammer against, any old Radio Shack item. It goes against like every fundamental principle of design I have. And, uh, yeah, speaking of things that go against every good bit of design ever created, you got to look at our next item. Uh, This is, uh, oh, oh boy. Uh, So this is 12-910, which I just realized I read the wrong number for the previous one. That was 14-7. Good job. I'm bad at this. (laughs) Um, So this is 12-910. This is the real 12-910. This is... Mickey's armchair radio. And uh, I'm sure we'll have it in the scan. I was very torn on which of these two Mickey Mouse products I was going to cover. But I... Because they're they're both unique. But I think this one is a better choice. First of all, it's weird seeing any licensed characters or anything in the Radio Shack catalog. Did you notice that right in the catalog it has a copyright Walt Disney Company or something like that? Yeah, it does. Yeah, And, And I'm like, how odd that they had to put that in there. So I understand the purpose. It's another give it to a kid thing. First mm-hmm. of all, uh, kind of defeats the purpose when I'm certain that could be used as a bludgeoning device. <laughs> uh, and it would hurt. You you can tell just from the picture exactly the hard plastic it's made out of. Um, so I think I'd rather give my kid the creepy stuffed animals, which coincidentally it's right next to in the catalog. Um, it looks horrible. It <laughs> looks really horrible. Yes, but it's Mickey, and some people love Mickey. Mm-hmm. It's just a little AM radio for $13. It's got Mickey Mouse on it. Great. You know what's really great about this thing? I can pick one up right now for 5 bucks. You got to do it. Oh, no. You know you want one. Guys, should we? Should we do it? It's just an AM radio, though. It's like right. it's not interesting enough of a tech device. Right. Um, Which is why it's $5. Here's what I want to know. Its original price was, what, 13? 13 How much of that went to Walt Disney Company? That's a good question. Like, what did Radio Shack give up to license that image? I don't know. Uh, so we're going to move on to my next one. This one is a much more interesting tech device. This is one of the most interesting ones on my list. Um, it is 15-1903. And it is the Universal 8-in-1 Remote. Oh, I remember these. It's $100 for a remote control. This is the one that had the uh, the digital display on the top. Yes. And it's you, a- you would have to train it. If I remember correctly, you had to train it. So you take like your other remote, and you point it at this one, and you teach it. Oh, that's a cool way of doing if it. If I remember correctly. Instead of like having to put in the codes for your specific TV model or whatever. Right. Blah, 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 blah. Um, I could be wrong on it, but I seem to remember that because I remember selling these. Um, I find this thing fascinating. First of all, it amazes me that remote control with screen built into it did not catch on as a concept. Logitech it, tried to do it later. Yeah, it's inherently cool. Like their right. Harmony remote right. thing. Right, yeah. right. But it still didn't do well. No. But here, a shame. here's why. I think it's cool. Most people don't want to go through the effort of programming their remotes. I think you just hit the nail on the head because I was going to say uh, I had to, a couple months back, just buy one of the cheapo generic universal mm-hmm. remotes. Right. And I had to program that to work with the TV. And that simple process made me want to rip my hair out. Right. I remember one, and I almost never use remotes because I, I use my phone for streaming everything now. But... I remember I had to do that once, and I bought the Universal Remote, and it had the code book, and none of the codes for the brand of TV that I had worked right. Yep. Like, they'd be close, but not right. <laughs> and I found that whole process infuriating. Um, so I'm not surprised that Universal Remotes have never been a really great seller, and uh, but I do think the aesthetics of this thing is pretty cool. I want one, and I probably will get one, because... Fourteen dollars on eBay. You can have one right now. And uh, our producer just told us that it took a ton of batteries. <laughs> I don't care. It's worth it. 
it's worth it. Uh, especially since, you know, uh, IR blasting remotes are mm-hmm. still a common thing. So you right. can probably hook it up to even your coolest, newest smart TV for, like, ultimate hipster points. Right. And then the whole audience is going to tell me I was wrong on that part. Oh. So it, it's possible. I just think remotes being universal is a good idea that never worked. Yes. But you look at, you go to someone's house and you see like six remotes sitting on their couch. It's like, come on, that's such a dumb process. Now, a lot of receivers have, I say, semi universal remotes built in them now that like they can control other components. But again, that whole experience seems to be very flaky. Yeah, uh, for sure. Um, are you excited for my next one? I hope you are, because it's Robbie the Robot. Robbie, Robbie the, the Robot. robot. Uh, he is sixty dash forty sixty one. It's Robbie the Robot, and uh, we had a little bit of a journey with this one because I showed this one to you. Yeah, this, just to show you. Yeah, I'm talking about some stupid things, right? Right. This is one that I did know was coming, and I'm going to say this. I looked on eBay, and the box was there, <laughs> and it looked. Scary. You don't get to see that from the catalog, which is such a shame because the box looks terrifying. Yeah, we'll, we'll include a, a picture of that This box, looks like a cute little robot friend here. I, I disagree. Even the catalog image kind of freaks me out. I don't like this thing. I never did. I remember seeing it on my shelf and just never caring to... It, it freaked me out. Look at his remote. It, it, I, his remote looks crazy. I didn't like it. At it, all. it looks like a full walkie-talkie that you use. I mean, I suppose uh, it, it had some kind is. of voice yeah, you can talk or something. I don't remember or how it worked, but I don't know. Now, the Robbie brand they used for several devices, and I remember one specifically, and that was the Coin Bank. And I thought this one was cool. It was a yellow trash can-looking robot, and it had a hand, and you put your coin on it, and it lift the coin up and put it in its mouth. You know what I find really funny about this one? <laughs> it's nine inches tall, so it's like this tall. Hey, really? Yeah, it says nine inches. I thought they were a little bigger than that. Maybe this one's, you know, yeah. like you said, there's a lot of them. Uh, I like it. I it don't. looks like I would that. never have bought one of those. You know, like, like it's, it's exactly the type of thing where a kid seeing it would get really excited, but have their expectations way too high. Oh, yeah. And, and within a week, it would either be broken or it'd be left in a toy bin. Yes, absolutely. I mean, 100%. no one, no one would want to do anything with this after the the newness. initial fact. Yeah, the initial. Yeah. What does it do? And then when they realize how little it does, they're like, "Oh, well, that's- wow! I can have my personal own robot friend for just twenty five dollars." Wow. Yeah, that that's a unique one, though. I mean, you know, Raider Shack had a lot of fun toys, especially during uh, um, Christmas. So typically, like around October. All these toys would start coming in, Mm -hmm. and in our store, we would use, like, a lot of the open space to make it kind of like Toyland. And I remember, like, you know, there'd be so many things. I'd be like, oh, this would be cool to play with. And Robbie was not one of them. Again, (laughs) I just... Poor Robbie. freaks me out. Uh, He sells for about the same price as he did new. If you buy one, it will not come in. (laughs) I'm going to have it, like, slowly, like... In your bedroom, like and I will uh, kick uh. that sucker. No, not happening. I I did not like that. All right, we've had a couple weird choices. How about something normal for a change? You picked uh, something normal. Twenty six, thirty one, thirty three. That's okay. Before it comes up on screen, I know twenty six computer stuff. What do we got? We got a color computer three. Oh, oh, thanks. So let's talk about my experience with color computer threes this week before we go into anything about the catalog. <laughs> this is the primary reason I included yes. it. Let's be real. We recently acquired all the color computers we could. So color computer one, two, three, and the uh, MC10. I wanted them to all be with their box because we have you know, easily 200 computers in our collection, and it gets to be a pain putting them on shelves. So when you have the original box, it's kind of nice because you can just put it in a box, put it on a shelf, and go. Plus we get you unboxing videos. Well, Plus I we get do, to. You get and to, And it's yeah. fun. So I bid on several color computer threes, which there were not many on eBay. Um, one of them, very yellow, no box. Buy now, $300. That's a lot. Then there was one that had the box, had some extra uh, memory chips and such. 
uh, and a dust cover. And at the time that I started bidding on it, it was like 100 bucks. Mm-hmm. Then it went up to about 200. I'm like, all right, 200. Then it went to 300. I was like, ah, oh, I guess. Then it went to 400. My last bid was like 430, and someone, maybe one of our viewers, bought it for about, I want to say 450. Mm-hmm. You just couldn't do it. I, I couldn't do it. Now, ironically, at the exact same time that that's happening, one popped up on eBay, buy it now, 170 bucks without the box, but it was in really good shape. So it was in good shape, and you're excited to get it, but you, you, you called me, and you were a little defeated. You're like, oh, no box. Yeah, and what happened today? And today, we were just talking about it, and boom, one comes up in box, buy it now, two, 280 280 yeah, 280. Uh, Guess like, what we can't buy cuz we already bought one yeah, without the box. Right. Um So let's talk happens about happens to us all the time, doesn't it? It's really hard because you know, when we buy these computers, sometimes we're buying them at a time when no one's selling them. So the price, you know, is inflated. And then, you know, we will buy it and we're like, well there's none listed but this one or two. And then all of a sudden there's like 50. Yeah. It, it you never know. Um, and, you know, obviously our goal is not just in collecting them, it's, you know, in telling stories about them. And that's, you know, so we want to have that variety. So but it's hard sometimes. My primary reason for picking this, besides that, is just because I'm really interested in these computers. No, I think right you just now. wanted to. Uh, yeah, yes, there. which was fun. Yeah. Uh, but I'm really interested in these computers because I know very little about them. So, and I, I know I've talked about this before, but. When I worked at Radio Shack, the second store I worked at had, or the last store I worked at, had a color computer still on display, still in the same design of the 1970s Radio Shack. I even showed you that one video that kind of showed the layout. Yeah, that was fun. Um, Our store still had that layout, still had that exact display with the Color Computer 3. The only experience I have with the Color Computer 3 is turning that thing on (laughs) when I came into the store. I have never used one. I don't know anything about them. It's going to be a learning experience, and now we have a whole bunch of them, and I'm looking forward to getting into them, and I'm you know, looking forward to uh, learning some of the upgrade paths. But at the time that I worked at Radio Shack, these were the computers that you still had in stock because you haven't sold them. Right. They're the old, old news. Right. You know, so my experience is completely limited. I think, you know, they, they kind of look cool. I like the form factor. I really like the the original color computers look. I think it's aesthetic. You're, you're talking about the silver look? Yeah. Because oh. I think they actually had another model that had more of the... Uh, oh, it's so cool looking. Of the color computer one. I think they revised it. I'm not positive on that, but I, I think I've seen a few. Um, I'm looking forward, as I said. I, I think, you know, the, the MC10 mm-hmm. is unique. Yes. Um, you know... Definitely better than some of the other small computers we have as far as, you know, typing and whatever. <laughs> but I couldn't see anyone, uh, you know, using them on a daily. I don't know. It'd be interesting. So our next one, 251032. Okay, again, we're in the computer space. Yep. Uh, <laughs> 20 megabyte hard card. Oh. I, I'm looking, uh, for our audience's benefit, I'm looking at the screen over here and... The entire page is up, and I was like, which item is he picking? But then I see it. Yep. The hard card. Uh, I, I could have picked either the 20 or the 40, but I went with the base model to pick because I think it's yeah. kind of funnier. <laughs> um, 499 was the list. 499.95 for 20 okay. whole megabytes. And what, 599 for the. No, I think it was 799. Was it? Okay. 699. They came down in price when I started selling them in like 91. Um, I yeah, and say actually, it was, if you look at it, it says they're already discounted from the previous year. Right. $100 off. So. Yeah. so these things were difficult to install, they were difficult to configure, and they were difficult to keep from dying. Um, they had to be parked whenever you move them. And a lot of our customers wouldn't do that. You know, it's like you, you forget you have to park this thing. So then it, you know, kill the, the this is truly the year that they died out. You can still get them for a little while later, but look at this right next to them. IDE hard drive. Yeah. And you know, 
I would say I sold them all the way up till the end of 91. We sold them still <laughs> because you had a lot of people who already had, you know, a, a TL, SL, you mm-hmm. know, that wanted a hard drive. But again, they were not really that much fun to install. I don't remember enjoying that process. If you had the chance, I'd rather go for an IDE drive in almost any situation. Right. But if I had the choice, I would not do any of those things because we're spoiled now with SATA. Oh, yeah. We don't have things to worry about, like, you know, making sure the ribbon's in the exact right no. order to change your drive. Also, we don't have to deal with just 20 megabytes. Right. Well, I mean. I just bought a new uh, 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 external drive for myself. Mm-hmm. Eight terabytes. Yeah. Cost me not that much. Yeah, we've got a whole bunch of eight and 10 and 12 terabyte external drives. And, you know, we're now starting to buy some uh, external SSDs that are, you know, one to four terabytes. Um, I feel guilty, though. I I feel guilty because I used to sell these and I used to have the sales pitch of explaining what they were, first of all. So I would say what a hard card was. Right. I would say, see this floppy disk? That's a file. And this hard card is a filing cabinet and it's 20 megabytes which means you can put a lot of these on this and you'll never fill it up it will make your life wonderful i sold a lot of them yeah i'm sure <laughs> um but they were awful they you were can get one now awful. in box for 200 dollars. that's an incredible deal compared to the original asking price so ironically i was looking at these on ebay not so long ago and the one that you mentioned I've seen that listing for months and months and months on eBay. So <laughs> no one wants them, apparently. I think it'd be an interesting experience. The problem is, you know, spending 200 bucks and not knowing if it actually works and, you know, just, again, how temperamental they were. I don't think I would invest that in them. But it, it's interesting that they got one in a box, right. right? You know, who knows if it was parked, <laughs> you know? Right. Um <laughs> So our last item of the day, and thank you guys so much for sticking through all these. I hope they were entertaining, right? It was for me. Uh, is 15-1274. And this is one of those, wow, we've come so far. <laughs> I just I just looked over and... I think this is my favorite out of the entire catalog. So I know 15 was the video yep. category. So I was trying to think of where you went with it. This was one of the dumbest <laughs> items I love we ever thing. had on our shelf. And I remember selling them to a lot of kids who wanted to be able to just switch with the uh, special effects. Right. It's a switch that gives you transitions. Right. You know, it just fade to blacks into your next thing. Yeah, I think it um, had like different patterns, like, you know, a diamond yeah, and, or a horizontal or a yeah. vertical. Yeah. Uh, guess what? <laughs> How easy is that to do now? Well, Okay, you could do that in like video editing stuff, but why would you want to do that with your TV and video equipment? I mean, you could, but why? But even at that time, you had tons of better options if you really wanted right. that. So what did this thing go for? 90 bucks. 90 bucks. Which, if you had a specific use case for this and you needed it, it's cheap. But it's Can you so give me, limited. in 1990, a reason why you would need this device? Because everyone that I know that bought one bought it just for the novelty. Um, um, it got really quiet in the studio. That is the quietest I've heard you in months. I can't think of it. Right. It was. <laughs> I was trying really hard. Right. Did you guys ever have one of these types of things? I know it's not a unique item. There are others like it. You know, did but you ever use for something like this? Anyone? Why? Why would anyone need this? It, it it just seems like a toy, and if you spend ninety bucks on it, you know that's Even kind of years the, before you had better options. I think the more expensive overall but thing that we've discovered though is there's a lot of things in the Radio Shack catalog that are useless items that are like gimmicks. Yeah, and this is one of them. <laughs> this is one of them, but. What I was struck by as I'm going through looking for products, and I really did enjoy that process, and I can't wait to do another year, but I was like, I forgot how many items were in the Radio Shack catalog and how many of those things were actually in our store. That's one of the cool things of doing this, because as tech nerds, you guys, uh, we all get that computers, 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 but there's so much else out there that's weird and interesting. 
Right. And I think this is a great way for us to highlight some of those items. So that was fun. I enjoyed it. I hope you all enjoyed it. What year should um, we do next? Yeah, what year That's would you like to see thing next? I, know. Um, I know we got all the 90s. We got a few 80s. Um, I don't know how far we go into 2000s, but um, pick a year in the 90s that we'll, you know, we'll do next. Or maybe the 80s. Maybe the 80s. Um, but this was fun. It, it brought back some fun memories. And I would love to hear what you guys found interesting in the catalog. You know, was there anything in the catalog that you, you know, wanted so badly as a younger person and couldn't buy? Yeah, what tech were you buying in 1990? Oh, man. <laughs> I can't answer that question. <laughs> yeah, what were you buying in 1990? Uh, nothing. All right. All right, so... Why don't you uh, do that YouTube thing that we do every Do you week? guys want to help us be able to buy that video special effects switcher? It's $10 on eBay, and I do not have $10. You can help us by supporting us on Patreon so we can buy useless stuff like that. <laughs> um, um, and please. No, no. If you buy that one, you must do a video demonstrating how it works. Wow. Uh, and please like this video and subscribe. You just sat through an awesome video going through tech that I'm sure no one has thought about for 20 years. Yeah, there's a lot of things on that list that have been forgotten. Uh, so please make sure to subscribe because we will do more. And of course, uh, join our Discord where you can talk about all of this stuff and more. And uh, you got anywhere else you want to pitch them? Um. I would like to see you on Discord, so if you haven't joined, do so, because that's where we're going to talk about this kind of stuff, and I really do like to hear what you guys think and uh, hear your stories. Um, if you worked at Radio Shack, definitely let us know that, because there are some people I know who watch these episodes who have told us some really good stories. Um, we'd like to hear from you. Yeah. yeah. All right. So that's And uh, we will see you guys next time. Bye. Bye.